know what mate, really sticks in my gullet about this? Uh, Archerwell, which is the, the, the charitable, charitable foundation. foundation that these two people who are going to save the world have, have created, uh, naming it after the sun they want to keep private. Uh, and they've issued uh, a, little, a little directive has come out for International Women's Day, which I thought was every day, but apparently it's next Monday. Um, and we've got a little warning sheet sent out to all of us about what we need to do on that day to pay respect to women. What do you mean a warning sheet? Uh, it's a warning sheet for all the things we need to do to, to show our virtue on International Women's Day. It's, I, I it's tend... a list of positive actions to support women yeah, You know women what, you shouldn't need to be told what to do Day. in relation to how you treat women in your Some life. Some people right? need to be told. No, I don't think so. Um, but you know what, the Queen's a woman and uh, she's 94 and her husband is 99 and he's seriously ill in hospital. Uh, maybe rather than sending out sheets about how we should be treating women uh, on International Women's Day, which is Monday, maybe just cancel your interview, Megan. Maybe cancel your interview, which is obviously going to cause great distress to your mother-in-law uh, and your father-in-law is seriously ill in hospital. Harry, what do you feel about this, Harry? This little list, this checklist of how to show people respect and check in and see how they are and all the rest of it. How does that sit, Harry, with you? Mr Privacy, who's about to spill all the beans in his normal white um, way about his family, as your grandfather lies seriously ill in hospital. According what is to, the matter with you? According to the Daily Telegraph, the royal family has more important things to worry about than the interview, according to Buckingham Palace aides. Um, you know what's amazing? The, the timing Queen... of the couple's interview was described as unfortunate. Oh, God, it's just... it's it's. Crass diplomatic, beyond belief. I think. Come on. Um, we, all know, we all know it is. Uh, CBS, I bet they won't move it. Whatever happens. In fact, if something, God forbid, does happen with Prince Philip, CBS will want to exploit it. No. Uh, of course it will. It's an no. American network. They want to exploit it for ratings. The question is, what's Prince Harry going to do in that situation if the, if the Duke takes a turn for the worse? Mm. What's he going to do? Is he going to allow his whining about what a tough life he has from his LA mansion? to go out on primetime TV on Sunday night? Well, I don't think I would describe it as whining, as you know, but I do it's think... It's going to be literally a two-hour whine-a-thon. Even the, even the two-second clip is a whine-a-thon about how tough his life is at his mansion in Santa Barbara in the middle of a global pandemic that's killed two and a half million people and left tens of millions of people destitute and penniless. But, oh, no, there he is in his, you know... Multi-thousand dollar suit. She's in a four and a half grand Armani dress, wearing Diana's 35 grand bracelet. Um, it's just, I'm sorry. I, people know my views. I yes. find it utterly nauseating. I think it's going to be uh, extremely bad for this country, the way that uh, she in particular will portray us. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, fascinating to see how hard Oprah goes. Will she take the gloves off with them mm. and ask them some tough questions? She said there were no areas out of bounds. Quitting your country, quitting, uh, quitting your families, both of them. <laughs> I mean, she's disowned all her family apart from one. He's disowned most of his. I mean, at what point does the question have to be... You talk, you preach about compassion, you two. You send out your little checklist for International Women's Day about we've got to show compassion. And this is what this says. This is the Archer World checklist. This month, let's unleash a groundswell of acts of compassion. Well, why don't you start with yourselves? Why don't you, Harry, who's never met your father-in-law? Never met him. Why don't you get on a plane? It's all far now. You live, you live an hour away. Get on a plane to Mexico and go and see Thomas Markle. See how he is. Show him a bit of compassion. What? But you've disowned him, haven't you? Uh, what, about coming and, what about showing compassion to your, your brother? Because your brother went through the same thing that you did. I don't see him giving endless interviews about it and saying how tough his life is because your brother stayed here in the pandemic and has done a fantastic job, frankly, him and his wife and the other senior royals in that pandemic, I think. That's called duty. You know, you get all the baubles, you get all the castles, the palaces, the servants, the trinkets, you get the first-class travel, you get all that kind of thing. Yeah, but they've given that up. But in return, they've said that they don't no, want they the No, they haven't given it up. The They're still the Duke and, and the Dutch. Star. They've still got their royal title, Susanna. Which is within you the see gift no problem. of the Queen. And you I don't see, no... see how you think you have more authority than the Queen in no. deciding whether they should keep their royal because titles or not. Because these two want to have their royal cake and eat it, and that is the central problem with this whole issue with Meghan and Harry. And people go, why do you talk about them? Because they're just given a prime time series of interviews. <laughs> they want to be talked about, obviously. They want um, to be talked about in terms which they consider more compassionate and more understanding. You think this interview is going to be compassionate? 
Well, I have no idea what's in the interview. Well, what, well given the clues from the, the trailer, what do you think we're going to be getting? Well, I think that they want people to understand what they have been through. What they've been through in a year of a global pandemic? I don't care. Well, hang on a moment. She has been through some tough times during the global pandemic. Yeah. She suffered a miscarriage. Two and a half didn't million she, people last year. Have lost so their... let's have a little bit of compassion for Two the and fact half... that a lot of people have individual how we... tragedy. How do we know about despite that? Despite the fact there is a backdrop of a global Fine. pandemic. I'm very sorry that she had a miscarriage. How do we know about that? Well, out of because interest. Because she shared that. Because she wrote an op-ed piece for a newspaper. In a way which connected with a lot of people who have been uh, through fine. the same but experience and with... allowed them to talk but about it. How does that it? sit again with people that demand privacy? If no, you're the one who reveals such an they intimate, don't private want moment. to be entirely private. They no. just want the coverage to be less toxic. How can you, no, there is a difference. No, they don't. They, they just don't want to go completely under. They undercover. just don't want Otherwise, any. Otherwise, they would stop doing the no, interview Susanna, together. No, Susanna, they just don't want any criticism. No, they just. And you, don't as want a journalist, toxic. You, as a journalist, should stop describing all the criticism mm. as toxic. I it's don't not. Describe all of it as toxic. You say I that have, you, I have to be you say they want to get away from the, the toxic yes. media. What is, what is this toxic media? Well, they feel that they have experienced something which they describe as toxic, and therefore they have left the environment that they felt was affecting their mental health. But you think they have a right to turn the tap on and off of publicity as and when it suits them, and should only have I good coverage. And the when public they behave with, be when they behave that, rankly, yes. hypocritically, you think that that should avoid criticism? Do you? I think that everybody. Just because you're in the public eye does not mean that you should have 100% publicity look at them, look at their faces <laughs> all there. the time. Look how angry they look towards the photographer who's taking They're just not picture. smiling. They don't look angry. No, if you zoom in on their faces, they're scowling <laughs> with fury that a photographer that dare... That is a total that exaggeration. ..that a photographer dares to have a piece of the publicity pie right, that just... they have created. Okay. Where They've is that created. photographer standing? He's trying to drive a car. Photographer's right in front of them. Of course them. he's not. You don't... You've no idea how pictures like that get taken. Well... Uh, but my point you, being... My point being, they did, this, is what the Beckhams, this is what the Beckhams do, their mates. Uh, well, I say mates, they went to the wedding, they probably never met them. <laughs> but the, the Beckhams, they, <laughs> they do this thing where they always seem scowling at photographers, and yet they literally <clears throat> used to collude with them. I know they did, because I used to be one of the editors who used to get the pictures. Um, it's, it's extraordinary to me. Piers, There's no self-awareness about You are about able that. to do a photo shoot without then having every single morsel of your life Can you do a major TV interview on one week on a top of an open-top bus, going around an open-top bus in Beverly Hills, yeah. which is where they were? Yeah. That's fine. You're talking about the James Corden. That's fine interview. with TV cameras to promote your brand in the yeah. way you want. But when a photographer on the same streets wants to take a picture of you in public, yeah. that apparently is a disgusting invasion of your privacy. Well, who it said is, it's a disgusting it, invasion of privacy? Their faces say it. <laughs> Just not the smiling their faces. Go, go in on their faces. You've got such a negative filter for them. Yes, Just Allow them to not smile I literally do have a negative filter you for do. them. You do. You know why? Because, because you're obsessed with them. Or, no, no, I'm not obsessed with yes, them. Yes, you are. I write about them no more than anybody else. You write about them a no. lot? Most columnists, I can tell you, write about as much as I do. But it's, she just the difference looks is, resigned to the fact that she's going to have a photograph taken of herself. Why don't you just not if, scowling? If you're going to play the fury. publicity game. Just accept you're going to be photographed. That's that's the deal. Look, he hates photographers. Okay, well, don't do open top bus interviews, Harry. And again, I come back to one thing. It is not a zero sum game, publicity, Piers. You can do some publicity, but not have to have every single part of your life open to scrutiny. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that legitimate criticism, when you are trading off royal titles and making gazillions doing it with your Spotify deals, your Netflix deals, all the rest of it, when you do that so aggressively to your own personal financial gain and you do these blockbuster interviews about your private lives, mm. I'm sorry, you have to be prepared to be properly scrutinised yeah. because they okay. are still... So one person's they are still... criticism is another person's toxic No, no, but the, the toxic thing and the bullying thing and the obsessive thing, all that is such lazy critique. Of what You're very at... supportive of people when Honestly, they talk about that. I don't know that. a single writer in Britain, a single... Col well, apart from one, actually, but I don't know a single columnist in Britain who hasn't totally agreed with me about this. You're the outlier. You're the one that seems to want to constantly defend them. Yeah. But nobody... I don't understand why. You know why. what it's like when you get horrible coverage. You did, when you did your life stories with Gemma Collins, she talked about the absolutely toxic way that yes. people spoke to it her It goes with the territory, her. because you and I both caught the media too. 
Yeah, but you understand. You just did a big interview people... in the Times, of didn't course. you? Of course. Yeah, Not the absolutely. week before, you did a big cover interview with a magazine. And you do interviews as well. Right. So, at what that point? The toxic so... side of it it's is not, tolerable. Stop using the word toxic. <laughs> Why? If, you, if you do interviews to promote yourself and your life and you and you make money out of that, yeah. which is what you do you a should, lot... Uh, you should expect the You should accept and tolerate regular it. critical scrutiny of your life as I, well. Okay. Absolutely. Right. It goes okay. with the territory. And you as a journalist should know that better than most. Thanks for the lecture. Well, you need it. You keep using great. their language. You keep using their words. Toxic. As if any criticism is toxic. Right. It's not. And actually. when people like Gemma Collins on Live Stories talks to you about how horrible that backlash is, yeah. you're very sympathetic. No, I'm sympathetic to people who get death threats from morons on Twitter. That is unacceptable, whether it's Gemma Collins, like... me, yeah, or Meghan and Harry. That is a line that should never be crossed. I think overt racism is completely unacceptable. But as I've discussed many times, I never saw that in the mainstream media aimed at Meghan Markle. She may have read it on social media. Yeah. Because lots of racist morons... She may morons, not have shared everything But she does publicly. tell us at the same time she never looks at social media. So which one is it? You either never look at it, in which case, how have you seen this, or you are conflating social media morons, who are disgusting in many cases, yes. with actually what the mainstream media have written about you. And the truth is, like I said yesterday, that up to the point of their wedding, I don't think any couple have ever had better press than those two. Notably and specifically because she was going to be the first biracial woman to marry into the royal family, which everyone in the media absolutely saluted. And so this idea now that she's now going to sit there with Oprah Winfrey, and I'm only guessing, but it's a pretty well-informed guess, let's put it that way, that she's going to play the race card and say that the British press were racist towards her. I'm not having it. And she can have her say and we'll have ours. Or, or rather, I will have mine. Because I think it's Oh, and I'm not allowed to have mine? Well, you know yours. Everything, everything I say is toxic. Well, I think we know yours. You think everything I say is toxic? I didn't say everything that you said. You do. You categorise criticism of them as toxic. Yeah, the toxic criticism is toxic. Right, but who decides what's Legitimate toxic? Legitimate criticism. No, Harry You're wants... saying that all criticism Harry is Harry and okay. Meghan think that all criticism is toxic. They would like everyone to be like them. Compassionate souls changing the world for the better. Oh, what Unless a lovely it's... world that would be.